Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Willis, and you will love economics. The greater the variety of goods and services available in a market, the more complex consumer choice becomes. There are many factors that will influence a consumer's decisions, including product price, marginal utility, and a consumer's budgeted income. However, one factor that can have a huge impact on consumer choice and market demand is the price of related goods. Related goods can either be substitute goods or complementary goods. A substitute good is a product that performs the same task as another good and can easily be used in place of another. A complementary good is a product that works in combination with another good to satisfy utility. When two goods are related, a change in the price of one good will affect the demand for the other. But how much will it change? Cross price elasticity can tell us. Cross price elasticity is the measurement of how responsive consumers are to a change in the price of a related good. In other words, how much will a change in the price of Coca-Cola affect your demand for a substitute good, like Pepsi? Or, how much will a change in the price of cereal affect your demand for a complementary good, like milk? Just like the price elasticity of demand, the cross price elasticity of demand can either be more elastic or inelastic. When the cross price elasticity of demand is more elastic, consumer demand for related goods is very responsive to changes in market price level. This means that price plays a huge role in the market, and as such, any change in the price of a good or service, no matter how big or how small, will cause consumers to dramatically alter the consumption of substitute and complementary goods. When the cross price elasticity of demand is more inelastic, Consumer demand for related goods is not very responsive to changes in market price level. This means people will continue to buy products no matter the price. And as such, any change in the price of a good or service, no matter how big or how small, will not cause consumers to alter their consumption of substitute or complementary goods much at all. The cross price elasticity of demand can be gauged by using the cross price elasticity coefficient. The cross price elasticity coefficient is a number that tells us exactly how much consumers will alter their demand for a good when the price of either a substitute or complementary good changes. The coefficient can be calculated by taking the percentage change in demand for one good and dividing it by the percentage change in the price of the other good. When the coefficient is greater than one, demand is cross price elastic and consumers are more responsive to changes in market price. When the coefficient is less than one, demand is cross price inelastic and consumers are less responsive to changes in market price. When the coefficient is equal to one, demand is cross price unit elastic and consumers will respond proportionally to changes in market price. Let's practice. Suppose that the price of shoes increases from $20 to $30, and the demand for socks, a complementary good to shoes, decreases from 250 pairs to 200 pairs. When the price of shoes jump by 50%, consumers decrease their consumption of socks by 20%. This gives us a cross price elasticity coefficient of 0.4, which means that the demand between shoes and socks, two complementary goods, is cross price inelastic. Now suppose that the price of butter decreases from $5 to $3, and the demand for margarine, a substitute good for butter, decreases from 1,000 units to 500 units. When the price of butter dropped by 40%, consumers decrease their consumption of margarine by 50%. This gives us a cross price elasticity coefficient of 1.25 which means that the demand between butter and margarine to substitute goods is cross price elastic. Finally, suppose that the price of cheeseburgers increases from $4 to $5 and the demand for milkshakes, a complementary good to cheeseburgers, 
decreases from 200 shakes to 150 shakes. When the price of cheeseburgers jump by 25%, consumers decrease their consumption of milkshakes by 25%. This gives us a cross-price elasticity coefficient of 1, which means that the demand between cheeseburgers and milkshakes, two complementary goods, is cross-price unit elastic. The cross-price elasticity coefficient can also tell us whether two goods are substitutes or complements to each other. When the cross-price elasticity coefficient is positive, it means the two goods being analyzed are substitutes. When the cross-price elasticity coefficient is negative, it means the two goods being analyzed are complements. Think about it. When two goods are substitutes, they can be used in place of each other to satisfy the same needs or wants. Because of this, price can play a huge role in determining which good to buy. Suppose that the price of Coke, a substitute good for Pepsi, decreases. Because Coke and Pepsi are close substitutes, you'll simply choose to buy greater quantities of Coke because it's cheaper than Pepsi and does the same job. So, when two goods are substitutes for each other, a decrease in the price of one good will cause a decrease in the demand for the other. On the other hand, if the price of Coke increases, you'll simply choose to buy greater quantities of Pepsi because it's cheaper than Coke and it does the same job. So, when two goods are substitutes for each other, an increase in the price of one good will cause an increase in the demand for the other. Considering these facts, if two goods are substitutes, they'll produce a positive cross-price elasticity coefficient. When two goods are complements, they're usually purchased together and can be used in combination with each other to satisfy a need or want. Again, because of this, price can play a huge role in deciding whether or not to buy these goods. Suppose that the price of peanut butter, a complementary good to jelly, decreases. Because peanut butter and jelly are complements to each other, you'll usually buy one when you buy the other. If the price of peanut butter decreases, you'll buy greater quantities of peanut butter in the peanut butter market. Then, after buying more peanut butter at a cheaper price, you'll buy greater quantities of jelly to use along with the peanut butter you've already purchased. So, when two goods are complements to each other, a decrease in the price of one good will cause an increase in the demand for the other. On the other hand, if the price of peanut butter increases, you'll buy lesser quantities of peanut butter because it's now more expensive. Meaning, you'll buy lesser quantities of jelly because you use the two goods together. And because you're buying less peanut butter, you won't need as much jelly. So, when two goods are complements to each other, an increase in the price of one good will cause a decrease in the demand for the other. Considering these facts, if two goods are complements, they'll produce a negative cross-price elasticity coefficient. Let's do a little practice. Suppose that the price of good E decreases from $10 to $8, and the demand for good F decreases from 400 units to 300 units. When the price of good E fell by 20%, consumers decreased their consumption of good F by 25%. This gives us a cross-price elasticity coefficient of positive 1.25 which means that good E and good F are substitute goods, and the demand between good E and good F is cross-price elastic. Now suppose that the price of good Y increases from $10 to $11, and the demand for good Z decreases from 500 units to 450 units. When the price of good Y jumped by 10%, consumers decreased their consumption of good Z by 10%. This gives us a cross-price elasticity coefficient of negative 1, which means that good Y and good Z are complementary goods, and the demand between good Y and good Z is cross-price unit elastic. Now suppose that the price of good B increases from $4 to $5, and the demand for good C increases from 250 units to 500 units. When the price of good B jumped by 25%, consumers increase their consumption of good C by 100%. This gives us a cross-price elasticity coefficient of positive 4, which means that good B and good C 
are substitute goods, and the demand between good B and good C is cross-price elastic. We can also use the cross-price elasticity coefficient to identify whether two goods are substitute or complementary goods, and then predict changes in the market for a related good. For example, assume that this is the market for good B. Good A and good B have a cross-price elasticity coefficient of negative 1.5, and the price of good A increases. Because the cross-price elasticity coefficient between these two goods is negative, we know that good A and good B are complementary goods. As a result, if the price of good A increases, the demand for good B, a complement to good A, will decrease, as consumers will buy lesser quantities of good A and therefore won't need to buy as much of good B. This will cause the price of good B to decrease and reduce the quantity of good B sold in the market. Now assume that this is the market for good X. Good X and good Y have a cross-price elasticity coefficient of positive 0.75, and the price of good Y increases. Because the cross-price elasticity coefficient between these two goods is positive, we know that good X and good Y are substitute goods. As a result, if the price of good Y increases, the demand for good X, a substitute to good Y, will increase, as consumers will buy greater quantities of good X because good Y is now more expensive. This will cause the price of good X to increase and boost the quantity of good X sold in the market. And that's cross-price elasticity. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting the red button below so you can receive alerts about new videos when they become available. If you enjoy the channel or find my videos useful, let me know by liking the video and feel free to leave a comment below. We have full video lectures on every topic in macro and microeconomics, as well as quick macro and micro minute videos for cram sessions and quick reviews. If you'd like to learn more, you can click here for my price elasticity video, or you can click here for my micro minute video on the cross price elasticity coefficient. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on You Will Love Economics.